Very good afternoon and many thanks for joining us on NTV Uganda. My name is Romy Busik and of course I'm here to talk about the Research and Education Network of Uganda. In January of 2006, Vice Chancellors of Leading Public and Private Universities together with Chief Executive Officers, I'm talking about CEOs, of some research institutions met and resolved to establish a research and education network. Now this network was to be a vehicle for facilitating the human networking needed to boost intellectual output and trigger the research-led transformation of higher education in our country, Uganda. A task force to spearhead the operationalization of their resolution was set up, and since then, get this, Renu has gradually developed to become Uganda's National Research and Education Network. Renu's, which is also the Research and Education Network for Uganda's first collaboration, was the focal issue of, re of the reduction of the cost of the international bandwidth and improvement of the quality of connectivity for each member institution. Since Renu's inception, the unit cost of international bandwidth to Renu member institutions has dropped more than 3,300 per Mbps per month in 2006 to as low as Twenty dollars, yes, per Mbps per month, depending on the capacity consumed by a particular institution. So we are here on NTV Uganda to assess the work that the Research and Education Network for Uganda has been doing to, since 2006. It's been 15 good years. So I do have the associate professor, um, do, that is Janice Desire Businge. She's an associate professor from Kampala International University. She's also the secretary from that institution. She's also the chair, um, she's also in charge of audits and risks at the Renu board. She's not alone. She's joined by uh, Dr. John Chitaimbo. He's in the middle right there. Very good afternoon, John. Uh, John Chitaimbo, he's actually the vice chancellor of uh, Uganda Christian University right there. He's also the chairperson of uh, the Renu board. Am I right, Dr. John Chitaimbo? The deputy vice chancellor. Yeah, the deputy vice uh, chancellor. In charge vice of chancellor. academic affairs. Indeed. How are you feeling, sir? I'm feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, we have Lloyd Santongo. He is a certified information systems auditor, and he also has some 17 years of experience. You've yeah. been to Mali. You've been uh, in India. Yeah, Mali, and you've been to India. Uganda here. Yeah. Yes, so we are going to be assessing the good work that uh, the Research and Education Network for Uganda has been doing for those 15 years. Let me start with the Associate Professor, uh, that is Janice Desire Businge uh, from Kampala International University. Now, Janice, as someone who has been working with uh, the Research and Education Network for Uganda for all this time, would like to know, what is RENU and what, is it, uh, what does it uh, stand for? Thank you so much and mm. good afternoon, viewers. Uh, RENU stands for Research education network for mm. Uganda and it is uh, it is a network of institutions that do research in and, high and education um, and it brings them together as members to 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 make sure that their internet connectivity is secured one and that it is fast so it was uh, like you said it was started in 2006 and then it was incorporated in 2008 and every member institution, as long as you, you, you subscribe mm. to it, you are free to benefit from the, from the different uh, services that mm. they have. I see. So as long as you are a research and education institution, you're, you're free to join RENU to mm. enjoy those services. Mm. So that's what RENU is about. So RENU, which is the Research Education of, uh, Network for Uganda, started as a member-based organization. That's what I understand. But yes. it later morphed into the National Research and Education Network. So uh, meaning it's a national program right now. Yes, it is uh, in all in the different countries in North Africa, in West Africa, in East Africa. We have different networks that bring research and education institutions mm. together. Mm. So you find that uh, in Uganda, when it when we bring uh, the different institutions together, then they form a network called Renu, mm -hmm. and it is the national education network mm. uh, for Uganda, mm -hmm. particularly. So it is a national network. Uh, w when you talk about Renu, a small current. Uh, uh <laughs> When we were talking and discussing about Renu, I could see a smile striking uh, from ear to ear on Dr. John Chitaimbo, mm -hmm. Chitaimbo's face. Um, you had a submission you wanted to make uh, onto what uh, Janice was saying? No, I, I think uh, she's captured it very well. <laughs> and yes. uh, uh, importantly, these mm. two institutions, the Research and Education Network, uh, as they consume the internet connectivity and all, mm -hmm. they have very specific needs mm -hmm. that need to be met through a national network like Renew. Mm. So help us understand uh, the transition from 2006, which was a member-based organization, Renew, and how it just morphed into the National Research and Education uh, Network for Uganda, I those two years. Mm. I think the biggest driver for all this was the need for 
uh, fast connectivity mm. but also affordable connectivity mm. uh, you cannot have a, a research or an education uh, institution without very good connectivity as uh, you are aware by the time uh, when you came into existence the cost of bandwidth was about 3300 US dollars mm. per megabits per second mm. and that was really expensive for most of our institutions for most of our universities and therefore they had to find a way mm. in which they could afford uh, internet but also have internet that is reliable and fast and I think that's where uh, Renew came in. Mm. The vice chancellor <coughs> sitting together thought it would be interesting to have uh, a network that brings all of them together with this shared need so that they could tackle this big giant pr problem together and there have been very good things that have happened since 2006 mm. we, today we talk about a cost of about 20 us dollars that is amazing mm. that is uh, s uh, something that has happened because of the deliberate planning that has gone on within renew and uh, i think we need to thank renew for what we are enjoying Indeed. because had uh, the pandemic hit mm. when the cost of internet was 3000 mm. i think would be we, all of us would be at home sleeping with all right if you're just joining us on NTV Uganda we are talking about the research and education network for Uganda the good work they've been doing since 2006 like mm -hmm. I did intimate earlier I have the associate professor that is Janice Businge desire she's not alone we also have dr. John Chitayimbo he's the deputy uh, chairperson of the Renu board he's also the deputy vice chancellor of Uganda academic affairs at Uganda Christian University you also have Lloyd Sentongo a certified information systems auditor yes and he's also been working as an IT manager at Rakai Health Sciences program. Am I right? 17 yeah. years of experience. Yeah. Mm. Dr. John Chitaimba, mm. here's some good news. There's something that a viewer might not know. You were one of the university, the first university to get on the Renu agreed. That was in 2014, way back. Mm. Uh, tell us about that and a lot more in that uh, we would like to know how institutions were grappling before the advent of Renu. Mm. I think I've already mentioned mm. one of the biggest challenges. Mm. The biggest challenge was affordability, mm. whether we could be able to afford the, the bandwidth that we needed to mm. run operations. I think Renew coming on board has increasingly helped us to solve the issue of affordability. So but even mm. with, um, for example, the high cost of internet mm. before then, the speed and the reliability of that network was not very good. Mm. I think increasingly uh, the member institutions through Renew have invested heavily in the network to the extent that now, mm. if you are in one of our campuses, for example, if you are at Uganda Christian University, you'll find that you will play a video without any buffering in between. And that is amazing. You can have a video conference uh, without any sort of interference. The last, uh, I think it was last year, late last year, Renew held its annual general meeting online. And we had members from the different parts of the country. And we had that... Uh, meeting go on uninterrupted and I think that's amazing but the third one which is very important is that through this network we are consolidating resources for example if you think about mm -hmm. the library resources the Renew network is helping the universities and the institutions to get out of the four walls and it is uh, getting us to a campus that is borderless mm -hmm. that is without limits so if you think for example about resources such as journal articles such as books, academic uh, academicians and researchers need books in order to carry out research. Mm. But this is all possible through the, for example, the e-library, uh, the medical students right now uh, having to do, for example, anatomy before uh, the coming of rain. You could not think about doing anatomy outside of a lab without a corpse before you. But mm. now with the, uh, the developments within the network, we are seeing a future where students are going to be able to do mm. Uh, anatomy to study while using what we call visual uh, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, of course uh, the, the 3D uh, capabilities that are being built up. We do have at center at Makerere uh, within the Inf Infectious Disease Institute, uh, the S that is helping us to do this. But this mm. would never have been possible Indeed. without Renew. I hear you. Mm. Let me also bring in a certified information systems auditor, and that's none other than Mr. Lloyd St. Tongo. As someone who has been working with a, a member research institution of Renew, what has your experience been like uh, using services of Renew in this institution? So to start with, I've been involved in Renew 
operations or design or planning mm. for the last 14 years. 14 years. And my initial role for the last first five years from around 2007 to 2011 or 2012 was to bring on board medical and public health institutions. So like I was like their mouthpiece. Mm. And the, my institution, Rakai Health Sciences Program, where I am the head of IT for the last 15 years, mm. has been on the Renew network for the last seven years. And what Renew does is when we connect to Renew, it helps us connect to other regional networks like Ubuntu Net in Eastern Central Africa, Wakren in West Africa, Jant in Europe, and Internet 2 in the US. Mm. But one thing that I want to bring very clear to the viewers is the local high-speed and reliable high-speed connectivity. And to put it in the perspective, you look at the shower that you use at your home mm. and imagine you're being showered with a river. You see? Yes. So I it's high-speed. It's reliable, but then there are reasons why it has to be high capacity and high speed. One, the traffic moving on the Renew network, it has to be as fast as possible. So the commercial providers would not address that need. And an example is, for my institution, Renew is giving me a high speed connectivity from mm -hmm. Kalisizo to Entebbe to Kampala, free. Mm -hmm. If I was paying for that, it would cost me maybe half a million dollar per year, annually. So, so could. But then, the traffic that is moving on this high speed local connectivity, it has to be secure. So Renew has given us frameworks, like the Renew Identity Framework, mm -hmm. to ensure that the whatever RIF. traffic mm -hmm. that is moving onto this link is secure. Mm. But because now they have put the local connectivity, they have given us the services, so they, they, they have helped train the IT staff in the mm. institutions. Like I said, I chair the ICT Directors Forum in Renew, so like he all heads of IT. Mm. And we are like a bridge between the Renew Secretariat and the member institutions. So. When they get the services, you can't go to any institution, mm. like to train you, for example, on EduROM or EduVPN. Yes. These are services that are located. Or web conferencing. Mm. Or web co so they're purely national research and education mm. institutions. So Renew has helped train or build capacity for the technical people in these institutions. Mm. Okay. Then lastly, uh, these huge services that we consume, it, 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 it hadn't happened before, but because of Renew and what we are consuming, I've been able to use the Renew platform to present success stories in person, either via posters or presentations in international conferences, Eastern Central Africa, West Africa, Europe, and the United States, mm. maybe about 10. So in brief, that is my... Great submission from Lloyd St. Tonga, Certified Information Systems Auditor. Thank you very much. Let me also bring in Associate <laughs> Professor Janice Desirable Sinji. Let's talk about the unique services that uh, the Research and Education Network for Uganda is offering to our dear Ugandans. L let's break them down. What are some of those services that Renu is offering? So unique that someone who is listening would be or watching NTV Uganda would be prompted uh, to join us. Mm. One is that uh, looking at where we are going now and where we are at, mm. especially the COVID-19 pandemic, a high-speed internet is very important for every institution mm -hmm. if you're in research or if you're in education and why because the exchange of information we exchange a lot of information mm. between institutions between academics so if you want that information to come very fast you're going to need a high-speed internet Indeed. and Renew guarantees you that mm. and in addition to that they give you the, the, they have a way they have packaged their services so the low the lowest user and the highest user will all benefit in different ways. Mm. For instance, uh, you find that if you need 10 MBPs mm. uh, at your at your campus, yes. you'll be able to access that. 
at your own affordable price. If you need uh, 200 or 300 MBPs, you'll also get that. Mm. And there are different packages that have been given okay. for that. So mm. you don't pay for what you're not going to use. Mm. And the third is that the customer service, the customer care that they provide. Reno provides, I think, one of the best customer care services. So if I have an issue with my network at my campus, all I need is they're just a phone call away. Mm. To call them and they'll be able to troubleshoot for you, they'll be able to deal with your issue, and they'll be able to solve it, and they'll give you communication and information back to say, okay, feedback, we have mm. completed this, this is what we found, and this is what you need to do, or this is how we'll help you. Mm. And sometimes when you have uh, issues with maybe your infrastructure or other things, they'll come in, they'll advise. And then because uh, you're all members and using the same service, mm. they'll manage somehow to look at the different resources that they have, and they'll even give to institutions. I see. Yeah, and then you're able to use. So their, their main issue is that if you're paying for a service, if you're paying for internet, yes. you're going to access that service hassle-free and at a very high, at a very high speed. So M meaning the partial lockdown that many Ugandans have been grappling with is non-existent with the research and education network of Uganda. Yes, for education institutions, you mm. can say that. Because during the lockdown, for instance, mm. Renu, um, Renu got like the bandwidth was unlimited mm. for the campuses. So if you are able to access through EduRoam and through um, the different services that they provide through mm. EduVPN mm. at your home and in different places, you'd be able to access it at very high speed. Such that when they now they open the institutions again, you're saying, okay, the speed that we had then, maybe it has gone down a little because at that point it was unlimited. You could access a lot of bandwidth that you are not mm -hmm. paying extra for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the lockdown, yes, affected us, but in some way it created different other opportunities. Mm. What about the partial internet uh, lockdown, that we, uh, shutdown that we saw in this country? Did it affect Renew in any way? Yes. Or you were on a different grid? No, no, no. It affected everybody. Banks were affected. Renu was definitely mm. affected. Uh, we were informed of what was going to come yes. beforehand. Mm. So we knew that they were going to, to shut it down. So for the time that it was shut down mm. until the time that it was opened, yes, we were affected mm. in that way. So you could, you could not access any resources. But after that, as soon as they opened, we were able to access as we were before the lockdown. Of course, the partial lockdown is still here. Many Ugandans are using VPN. But guess what? The Research and uh, Education Network for Uganda has its own formal VPN. It's called the Edu VPN. But then the trick is, if you're not a member of the Research and Education Network for Uganda, you cannot use the Edu VPN. But uh, acquaint us on how actually it, it works, the Edu VPN. How does it work? The Edu VPN is, um, you see, most VPNs you find uh, mm. in different places. It can take mm. you to Sweden, to Cambodia in one second in, from in the there, other. Yes. So here is a service that allows you to have a secure virtual private network. Locally. Yeah, mm. but that allows you only to access educational resources. So it is not going to take you to any other resources. Mm. It is just a VPN. It is a private network that will allow you to access library resources, journal articles, and all those things that are re related to, mm. to education and to data that you need for research and education. Mm. So it's specifically a network mm. that allows you to access internet services for education and research purposes. Right, let's also bring in Dr. John Chitayimbo and talk about whether or not there have been any specific research projects that you've accomplished using the Research and Education Network for Uganda's you know, system or grid. Um, I think there are a number of interesting projects that um, I think the Research and Education Network has helped us break them down to achieve. I think the greatest, mm. uh, one of the greatest products within Renew is the cloud uh, package. Because with the cloud package, you are able to store data uh, with them. You don't have to buy servers uh, and heavy machines Very expensive. at your mm. institution. And I think um, uh, for me, I am a data scientist myself. And uh, now we talk about things like big data. Mm -hmm. And uh, I work with um, a a DNA sequences. And with DNA sequences, if you are to collect uh, DNA sequences for 1,000 people, that would be really heavy data. And, uh, and so what we are doing at the moment is that we, through our networks, and this is what is important, because although I come from Uganda Christian University, I have uh, partners that work at Uganda Virus Research Institute, some of them are working at Makerere, that we can use the same resource mm. that is stored uh, uh, under the uh, Renew Cloud to do collaborations and to do computing. We do have some of the best uh, high-performance computing facilities in Uganda at the moment. 
I think um, the one at the uh, the one based in Entebbe, the uh, the one called Yumik, yes. is uh, like one of the best in Africa, in the whole of Africa, mm -hmm. and the one based at uh, IDI in Makerere is also very good. But then what happens is that if I'm working on my data from UCU, I can make use of the computers uh, at Entebbe using uh, free connectivity because, like Lloyd explained, local connectivity across the different campuses mm. is free. Mm. And so if I'm connecting from Uganda Christian University uh, to uh, Muju, say, in Makerere or uh, in Tebe, UVRI, or in Arua, our campus in Arua, all that connectivity is free. And I think it is at about 10 gigabytes per second, which is very fast connectivity, very fast uh, collaborations can be done. And uh, if I am transferring, for example, mm. A, gig, a, a, a gigabytes of data from my campus to Lloyd's campus, it doesn't take very long mm. to do this. So uh, the people who are working within big data are benefiting a lot from the connectivity and from uh, uh, what Renu is having to offer us. But to education institutions as well, uh, being a member mm. organization, yes. Renu has come in very handy during this time to help us cope. For example, one of the problems we are suffering with as universities, how we would get to our students who are locked up in their homes with restrictions on travel. And so very quickly, Renu came up with two products that I thought were very excellent. One is what they call the Metro Edurom, mm. which gives you access to the Renu internet in uh, over 300 uh, sites mm. across uh, Kampala, Mukono, and Entebbe. This product is going to be expanded to cover the entire country. But I think this is great because as I move around the town now, I can see that there are spots within the city where I can easily access the Renew connectivity without getting onto any of these other networks. Mm. The other one which was great, and we want to thank our partners like MTN, was the zero-rated access to e-learning resources. Go ahead. Because with the zero-rated access, it meant that for a student of KIU, trying to access their e-learning materials online, it was very easy for them to do that because uh, uh, with zero rated internet access, they didn't need to pay. All they needed to invest in was uh, an MTN line to do that. Mm. But we also had uh, uh, things like when you are teaching and learning online, one of the biggest fears is plagiarism, trying to ensure that the work that you're examining mm. is actually for your student. It is original. And uh, when you came in handy and provided us with uh, a certain anti-plagiarism software that is called Tanity, mm. which is critical for a, 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 a teacher like me, because I would like to make sure that whichever mark that I award a student, mm. it is an original mark. Meaning by the time the student uploads this research on the Renu systems, it's, it's actually verified whether mm. or not it's from someone else. Yeah, so for example, t there is something called the learning management system, mm. and different uh, universities use different learning management systems. Meaning I can't go to Google and get some article and then <laughs> <laughs> I think pretend in, that it's my own work. I think in, in research <laughs> really and in great. education, you're allowed mm. to go to Google, mm. and you're allowed to consult. But not to copy and paste. You don't mm. copy and paste, you, and Indeed. you also have to acknowledge. But, but let's also talk about the cloud. You say that uh, different member institutions can actually get onto the Renu cloud. Don't you think it's susceptible to hacks and what are you doing to protect the people who are already hooked on the grid? I think one of the greatest fears of our time is how we can remain secure when we are going online. Mm. And I think this is something the banks have been struggling with. Indeed. But research and education networks are increasingly thinking about this. And uh, if you're going to hire Lloyd as a UCU, it might be an impossible task to do that. Mm. But now what we are doing under Renew is that as a network of 220 sites, we are having to employ about three or four people who are certified security experts mm -hmm. that are helping to protect us. Mm. And uh, Renew, on a monthly basis, generates um, uh, a report to all the member institutions that is mm -hmm. highlighting the risks, that is highlighting the, the different windows that hackers can use. Mm. It is, uh, I can't say we are 100% protected, Indeed. but this is a work in progress. A lot of training needs to go 
in, we need to invest more as institutions, mm -hmm. but I think it is much easier to do that as a network mm -hmm. rather than as one institution. All right, let's now try to link uh, Brenu to the COVID-19 pandemic and what kind of services were there to help institutions get through the COVID-19 pandemic. With you, Lloyd St. Tongo, the Certified Information Systems Auditor. Mm -hmm. Now, get this, uh, the Research and Education Network for Uganda is an ICT-enabled collaboration. That's, that's what they focus on, ICT-enabled collaborations. Mm -hmm. So what kind of services, Lloyd St. Tongo, from Renu was so important for you during the onset of the pandemic? There are several. Go ahead. But let me start. Uh, my colleagues raised very important points. Mm. And one of the points she raised is the EduVPN, which mm. was a very critical service. Indeed. Let me digest this a bit that uh, unlike the other VPNs that users are used to here, mm. what the EduVPN is going to help you is it's going to move your traffic, assuming I'm working from here, NTV. So it's going to move my traffic, and in the area where we have been working virtually, I go into my network, and I access anything in my network as if I'm physically there. Mm -hmm. In Africa, there could be two or three countries that are offering that. Renew, Tenet in South Africa, and there could be a third one. Very great service. Uh, he talked of the big data. Still, I, I want to add on, it's a very good point. I said initially that the circuits that Rennie puts up are mm. high speed. So previously, people who are generating terabytes or petabytes of data, mm. to process that data, they had to take it to Europe because there was no facilities here in the country. So what Renu does is, because they have put up a bigger pipe where this traffic goes, if Dr. Chitayimbo at his campus he has data and he needs to collaborate with three or four, five other campuses, mm. you don't need to replicate that data elsewhere. So he will have the data, and I use the Renu Identity Federation Services right. to access this data. And what that means is, he doesn't have to give any other institution credentials, but institutions are going to come in with their credentials, access this data, but being authenticated from their local institutions, like in this case RHSP, mm. then after I'm authenticated, I'm authorized mm. to get that very huge service. So during the pandemic, like, you know, everyone was virtual. So anything that you could use to appear as if you're physically in office but you're working remotely, mm. I mean, was a very good thing. And one of the things that Renu did was the uncapped internet traffic. So just look at it. Universities are closed. Mm. Research institutions continue working. Okay. But universities are closed, so it means Renu revenue reduced. But here's the person, the revenue has reduced, but is giving unlimited mm. connectivity. That okay. was a huge uh, boost. Mm. So the other thing that Renu did for us was the collaboration tools like the M conferencing, Zoom. And these were secure because when you get to this service, mm. you need to be authenticated from your local institution. So it, it means it's very, uh, very secure. Mm. Very secure. Mm. So those are some of the uh, services that uh, Renu helped us. And very briefly, let me talk about the EduRoom. Mm. Perfect service, because there are some students who are near these 300 hotspots. And these hotspots, I think, are from Mokono to Entebbe. Mm. So the beauty is, if your institution, like mine or mm. his or hers, have EduRoom, if I go, let me say to, there's a room around Serena. Yes. So when my laptop hits the network name Edirum here, mm. Serena will say, I, I, I don't know Lloyd. So the packet traffic will go to Renew, and Renew will say, but Lloyd is from RHSP. So the packet will go to my institution. Yes. They check. Is this Lloyd, is he active? Yes. So the traffic comes back and I get internet here. 
And so it can, eliminates the hassle of Romeo Busiku having to run to the IT department exactly. to get a password. E exactly. To get hooked. Exactly. So you just exactly. log in. Actually, it's, it's the most secure wireless. And if I can expand that further, mm. I have been to airports in Europe or institutions in Europe, mm. in the US. I, I can give you an example when I was at the National Museum in Washington. And my, and my iPhone, like, emails were popping up. I said, what, what's going on? Mm -hmm. I'm not on data roaming. Mm. And only to check that my iPhone had connected to Edirom mm. at the National Museum. Mm. And what that happens is the traffic takes the same path. They come to my institution. Is this Lloyd? Yes. They give me the service. So here is the beauty of that. Edirom, if I go to the institution, mm. they only give me the service. They don't want to bother giving me the a username and password. Very <laughs> secure. Yes. And it's hassle free. Uh, would you free. say that uh, you say these hotspots for the internet, as far as Renu is concerned, are from Wakiso to Entebbe? Are I, I there think any from Entebbe, in from, rural from, areas? From Entebbe to mm. uh, Mukono. Mm. So, like this was the startup. But uh, these are going to increase. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like I said. But as we speak, there are no hotspots in rural areas. They, they're, they're trying to put. Okay. Maybe by the end of the year, they should be. Mm. But the other thing is, it's not only in country. Like, mm. for example, if you go to Kenya or South Africa or Europe, and your institution has a Durham, you don't need to ask anyone, Indeed. maybe you're in Oxford or an airport in Europe, you just get hooked to the internet. Jenny's the desire Businji. Let's talk about Businji. our learners in the rural areas. I don't want to leave this show before talking about this, this situation that uh, was, uh, you know, in, during the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, what we did see uh, Businji was that uh, many of the young learners in the urban centers where there is internet connectivity, they have uh, the technological tools to get onto the, onto the internet and continue with uh, uh, continued learning. But then the, the learners in the rural areas, they were having it rough. There is no internet. There is no connectivity. They, they are poor. They do not have the money to purchase maybe a laptop, maybe a, a smartphone, a computer to be able to continue with their learning. So... What do you think is the situation within the rural areas? Has Renu been able to bridge the divide, the urban rural divide? Yes, for me, it mm. has. It has been able to bridge to a certain extent. Right. Uh, there are still some challenges, yes, uh, about bridging that. But currently, um, as long as you're a member institution, for instance, a student in Kabale University, mm. if you come to Kampala and you, you have, uh, you have uh, there is a room, mm. you'd be able to, to access the mm. internet. In yeah. Kampala, you'll be able to access your services that you'd have accessed Indeed. at, at Kabale University. So all those member institutions that are in the rural areas, and now you have secondary schools and primary schools coming onto r the Renu network, they're able to access those resources. Mm. Even if they're upcountry, they're able to enjoy the same service. Mm. As uh, Lloyd was saying, we had the, the AGM, mm. the, annu the, the annual general meeting for Renu, in, uh, in last year when the lockdown had just started. I think it was April. April. And this was virtual. Mm -hmm. And at that point, everybody was working at home. But all the members from the different institutions across the country were able to participate in the mm -hmm. AGM. No one reported not mm -hmm. coming, and that was because of Renu. Mm -hmm. So as much as there are challenges in getting most of these institutions on board, mm -hmm. they, to a certain extent and to a big extent, the institutions that are subscribing to Renu as members mm -hmm. have been able to enjoy these services. And that bridges a little bit of the rural urban, urban divide. Let's say during the onset of the pandemic, it was so, so bad that uh, my parents were rendered jobless. Now they cannot pay for my school fees. Mm -hmm. But I would like to continue with my learning. And uh, here's an opportunity from Renu. But then to be able to get hooked onto the grid of Renu, I need to be subscribed to an institution, mm -hmm. a research institution. So is there any service from Renu for individuals who are not in the school system like I've dropped out, I'm no longer in the school system. Can I get hooked onto the Renault system, the Renault grid, and continue with my learning? Currently, currently, you wouldn't be able to access unless your your institu mm. institution is subscribed to Renault, mm. because it we have to know. Like he said, they have to authenticate mm. information. Yes. For instance, if you want to get onto Edrom, the information has to be brought mm. back, authenticated through the network, and then they say, okay, we recognize mm. this person. So you only recognize through that kind of network, and that's why it's a network. Mm. So if you're in the rural area and you want to access, see, it would be through an education institution, mm -hmm. because Renu has managed to take the network and to pull it up to the different institutions. For instance, our Western campus in mm -hmm. Ishaka yes. is also on the, on the network. So there, there are people in the rural areas that are accessing it, but not be all, yeah. because of the different challenges here and there. Mm -hmm. But I think going forward, 
also that will be that will be a milestone mm. that I think uh, we have to work at. In, in, uh, indeed, because so many of our, of our young learners have dropped out of school mm. and uh, simply negating that factor won't help them. But having the uh, services that they need put onto their doorstep would actually go a long way in alleviating their problems. So Janice, would you say that KIU has benefited from the services of the Research Education uh, Network for Uganda? Most and how? Definitely. Mm. Most definitely, and in, in, in very many ways and wonderful mm. ways. One is that uh, at the time that Renu came, we joined Renu Network in 2014. Just Our at the network, same time you see you joined? Yes. All right. Our network experience was not so good. So you find you, you spend so much, and yet the internet is not so fast. Mm. Now getting onto the Renu Network cut our cost almost by 80% or so mm -hmm. to allow us to enjoy a fast internet connectivity, but also have the services at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. If I have a problem, for instance, I want uh, I want to troubleshoot what is happening with my network, mm -hmm. Renu will be at my disposal to come and help me take care of that. And then the uniqueness of the, of the, of the services that they offer. If I can afford uh, 10 MBPs, they will give me that. If I can afford 20, if I can afford 30, so that different is packaged differently for different individuals. And it is up to you to, it's up to an institution. Mm. What you can afford is what you <coughs> get, but even then, it mm. is very good. If you want to increase, you increase. At a certain time, you just inform them, and you and you increase. So mm. it has been it has been wonderful for us at KIU mm. to have that. And then our students to be able to access uh, internet in, in different places. So if you get on the EduRoam to access VPN, if you want to access the LMS, the learning management system, you can do that because mm. of the network that has been enabled by Renu. And if you want, if you are a researcher and you may be a graduate student and you want to access a library resources, you can do that through that through mm. that network without necessarily being on the on the campus. All right, Remy also uh, bring in the deputy chairperson of the Research and Education Network for Uganda. Yes, you are the deputy chairperson of the Renu Board, uh, Dr. John Chitaimbo. You are also the deputy uh, vice chancellor academic affairs for Uganda Christian University. But we would like to know what the COVID-19 disruptions actually meant for ICT in your institutions. I think the biggest challenge uh, to us as institutions was a regulatory uh, challenge that with us, um, the education institutions, we are ready to adapt and to cope. I think uh, the government, through the regulators, mm. were a bit slower. Uh, I remember that the regulation that enabled continuity to, to happen came around September, when the COVID pandemic started in March. Mm. And so we did lose a bit of time. But fortunately, the government and the regulators are now fully on board and uh, there is uh, still a lot that is being done. I think we can say COVID-19 has been like a watershed moment for education as a whole in this country. There is going to be lots of innovations. There's going to be lots of new products that are going to come out of Renew. And uh, I think it is so far so good because when the government allowed the institutions of higher learning, for example, to open, mm -hmm. by October, most of them we are back online mm -hmm. and they were offering an education. And you have heard that many academic institutions have had what we are calling virtual graduations. That the concept of having students put on gowns and then going into a freedom square and enjoying a graduation. I think the institutions have had to cope with that and they have had to innovate and through Renew they have done it successfully. Uh, we have had institutions uh, so we have had challenges, and they are still big challenges. Mm. Uh, but I think there are innovations that are coming up. Mm. For example, the innovation of the Metro Edurom is going to completely change the way we do education. Mm. But we also need to be aware of uh, um, the paradigm in terms of how education is being offered. Uh, before Renew and before the pandemic, institutions were working in sort of silos. Uh, they were working independently. UCU was safeguarding whatever it was having, and it was working alone. KIU was similarly doing that. Mm. Makerere was doing that. But if you look at the trends elsewhere, it looks like the way we deliver education is going to keep on changing mm. because now you're going to have a student who will be able to cherry pick what they pick from KIU, UCU, and Makerere to come up, to eventually come up with a degree. Mm. And all this is going to be possible because of a network such as Renew. And I think as Ugandan institutions of higher learning, we need to be ready 
and I think the Renew Network gives us a great platform to innovate and to come up with products that are going to help us be competitive. Dr. John Chitaimbo, now more mm -hmm. than ever, do you think uh, that Renew should be targeting individual learners instead of the institutions as we speak right now to ensure that everyone is on the grid, connected? I think that when you think about institutions, for example, if you think about UCU, mm. UCU um, is not a, a set of buildings in Mukono, but it is um, the individuals, the students, the individual learners mm. that are within UCU and the lecturers. And so I, I, I was largely talking about the learners who are out of the school system, in that um, if Ren was targeting these learners mm. who are out of the school system to bring them back into the, uh, the fold of the education system, they would have to target them, not yes. the institutions. Because if you're targeting the institutions, you don't mm. know how many young learners mm. have since left the institutions and are you not know, learning. Uh, you know, Renu is regulated. Yes. And it has a very specific license mm. to reach out to education, and research institutions. Indeed. In fact, before admission to Renew, mm. we need to ensure that one, you are either regulated by the Uganda National Council for Science and Technology, mm. and we need a certificate for that, or we will need a, a license from the National Council for Higher Education, or the Ministry of Education. So the license that we have uh, is limited to those three entities. Mm. And, um, and so we are indirectly targeting the other learners. Let me say, one of the things that is going to come as a result of Renew is that if we continue to innovate and if the institutions continue to work hard, mm. the cost of education is going to drop drastically. Whereas you needed to pay, for example, for accommodation to be at UCU. And so during COVID-19, we mm. saw that there was almost a third, in the, a, a third of the fees dropped mm. simply because students didn't need to be around UCU in order to continue learning. And so if we continue on the right path, these benefits are going to trickle down mm. to the learners. One, the education is going to become cheaper. Secondly, the resources are going to be freely available in the different parts of the country. Because if, and if you are in Karamoja, we have had, for example, at Uganda Christian University, international students who have not yet even been allowed to come back into the country. But because of revenue and the connectivity, uh, we are continuing to teach them off campus and when they come back they will have benefited. So these products still target the individual learners and it will be some time until we get the product to every other person but we are now with there. Very insightful conversation I'm having with three individuals. That is uh, Dr. John Chitaimbo, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs at Uganda Christian University. He's also the Deputy Chairperson of the Renu Board. He's not alone. We have Associate Professor Janice Businje Desire. She's an Associate Professor with Kampala International University. She's an educationist, very passionate with over 20 years experience. We also have Lloyd Sentongo, the Certified Information Systems Auditor. He's been working as an IT manager with Rakai Health Sciences program. Also, he's been to India, he's been to Mali and many other countries, so he has a wealth of information. 17 years that you could actually acquaint with us right here on NTV Uganda. We are largely focusing on the uh, research and education network for Uganda. We're going to take a breather and return with a lot more. Just keep it here. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on NTV Uganda. My name is Romy Busiku and we are talking about the Research and Education Network for Uganda and the good work they've been doing for the last 15 years. Well, I still do have Dr. John Chitayimbo, one, and we also have uh, Associate Professor Janis Desire Businje, and we also have Lloyd Sentong, a Certified Information Systems Auditor and also an IT Manager with Rakai Health Sciences Program. Yes, my heart is bleeding for the young learners who have since vacated the education system because of the so many factors that have come about as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Poverty here and there, so many have dropped out. But guess what? The Research and Education Network for Uganda has a solution for the young learners who are out of the education system. You can still get hooked onto their grid and continue with your learning. Well, Businje. Let's continue to talk about uh, the young learners out of the education system and uh, what benefits they actually stand to gain from Renu and those member institutions that are not part of this organization, what do they stand to lose? Uh, I think they stand to lose a lot. One is that if you're not a member, then you cannot access the high-speed internet that we have talked about. Indeed. And I think in order for us to understand this better is to make a distinction between Renu and an, an internet service provider because the two are completely different. 
So the, the, it, it, Renu does not directly provide an internet service. Renu brings together institutions that form a network to be able to collectively bargain for cheaper internet connectivity for their institutions. Mm. So in order for somebody to gain and for the, the young learners who are in different places, mm. it's to find a way of getting them into an institution kind of uh, arrangement where then they can be able to access mm. the services of Renu. Mm. But um, as, we, as we expand and go forward, maybe those are some of the things that can be you know, thought about mm. and we see how to engage also to bring uh, every learner on board to make sure that every learner benefits from mm. the from the Renault services. Mm. Yes, please. Dr. John Steinberg, go ahead. How has UCU benefited? Uh, Continue. And do you feel like the challenges that uh, have befallen this institution even before the advent of Renault have been solved now that we have Renault on board? I, I think UCU has benefited and is continuing to benefit mm. quite a lot. Uh, one, uh, if you think about UCU, we have uh, different campuses in different parts of the country. Mm. We do have a campus in Arua, we have a campus in Imbale, we have another campus in Kabale, and we do have a campus uh, at uh, Mukono and Kampala. Mm. And um, before COVID, uh, Reni was there long before COVID, but before COVID, mm. a lot of the teaching and the learning was happening in each of those different campuses with very little connectivity. But I think during COVID, for example, from October, we tried one thing that the network can help us to accomplish. And that was to have, for example, one lecturer uh, teaching our students across the different campuses. Physically, you cannot do that. But with a, a high speed internet, you can be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that has been great. And we are seeing a lot more collaborations between um, uh, our different lecturers mm -hmm. and researchers in the different campuses but we're also now able to make use of our partners abroad uh, for example if we have a great um, uh, lecturer in Harvard who would like to give a lecture at UCU now it is much easier to do that and we are investing and we are continuing to invest uh, greatly in our learning management system and in the learning s the systems that support learning I think uh, we are not yet there. Mm. This is uh, very much the start of something very interesting. Mm. But what we can say is that Renew is going to be a very big part of where we are going. Mm. Uh, one thing that we noticed, for example, as you see, is that before COVID, we had a very fast network. And then, like you have been told, during COVID, the cap on the bandwidth was removed. And so during COVID, we had very fast internet. And then after... COVID, it was around January, mm. the cap was put back by Renew because Renew needs to pay for these services. Mm. And then we s experienced some kind of slowing down mm. of operations because now people are consuming much more than they were consuming before COVID. Mm. And so in terms of the planning for the university, we are having to think about investing more in terms of the bandwidth that we purchase. But obviously, it is much cheaper purchasing mm. it from Renew but one of the other things that was exposed uh, when we started learning online is the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The infrastructure in place before COVID seemed to be very sufficient. But when you start to test some of these, for example, if you're going to use the big blue button, mm -hmm. which is one of the products Renew is offering. Yeah, Lloyd will talk about it. Yes. Uh, the, the, the infrastructure that you need in place mm -hmm. to be able to support that is a really very sophisticated infrastructure. And I think part of what as institutions, not really, but as institutions we need to do. But, so, to in a nutshell, Dr. John Chitaimba, would you say that the challenges that had befallen education institutions before 2005, because Renu came in 2006, mm -hmm. would you say that the, those challenges have been largely resolved in the last 15 years? I would have said they have been li largely resolved, mm -hmm. but you have to remember one thing. Yes, yes. That COVID-19 mm -hmm. changed everything. Indeed. I think if you were to write a book, mm -hmm. you would say the thing that changed everything. And that is COVID-19. Meaning if you are at 90% by 2019, 2020, yes. we've largely gone down. Maybe we 50%. might be back to 20%. I hear you. And uh, But now the good thing is that you have Renew with you. And so the thing To take us back yeah, to the right to, road. Yes, mm. we have to go back. Because the products, the mm. way of learning and the way of doing business is largely very different from what we had pre-COVID. Mm. Pre-COVID, we are really doing very well. I'm not talking now as... Renew, but I'm talking as a member institution. Mm. And I'm saying that as a country and as um, uh, members, we need to think 
and to use our network very well. Fortunately, we do work with uh, some of the government agencies such as NITAU, the Uganda Communications Commission, uh, the National Council for Science and Technology, and the National Council for Higher Education. Mm. And I think together we are thinking uh, with these entities and with the members to see how we can get back much better and, uh, and, and uh, able to compete with not only Ugandan institutions mm. but with every other person. Thank you very much, Dr. John Chitayimbo. And to you, the viewer who is watching NTV Uganda right now, we have the studio lines open, actually. You can call in and let us know what your reservation is as far as this con uh, conversation is concerned on uh, the Research and Education Network for Uganda. Lloyd Sentongo, uh, Dr. John Chitayimbo talked about the infrastructure being at par before the COVID-19 pandemic. And then it hits, and then we realize <laughs> we don't have anything. But then before you give me your submission, do we have a caller? <coughs> All right, Martha, are you on the line? Hello, Martha, are you on the line? Hello? Yes, Martha, good afternoon. We are talking about the Research Education Network for Uganda. Any reservation you want to point out? Yes, I'm on the line. Go ahead. Thank you for such a great show. Thank you for watching. Go ahead. Martha, what do you have to say about the topic? Yeah, my question is, yes, my question is, I have a private consultancy firm, and I do research sometimes. Yes. Private consultancy firm, and you do research. Go ahead, Martha. Am I eligible to join Renew and benefit from its services? That's the first question. Okay. And? Then the second question. Go ahead. And then, yes, um, and then the internet connection that I have is frustrating. This is like the third service provider we have changed to. How can I be sure that many will not frustrate that? Okay, thank you very much, Martha. But for Renu to frustrate, you would have to first get onto the grid, <laughs> which is the biggest nick right now. Lloyd Zentongo, she says she runs a private uh, consultancy mm. firm and she does research on a periodic basis. And uh, she was wondering whether or not she can get onto the Renu grid. Uh, that's a very good question. Indeed. Uh, to start with, and like his, my colleague said, we, we, we are regulated. And one of the requirements for someone to become a member of the Research and Education Network Uganda, you have to be recognized by the Uganda National Council of Science and Technology, Minister of Education, and the National Council of Science and Technology. Those are the three requirements. And if she follows into one of those, then she can be a member of RENU and she enjoyed the services mm. at the zero rate I see. for membership. Mm. Then she talked of the frustration with the connectivity. Mm. Mm. Uh, eight years ago, when you had about 50 campuses, ab about that. Mm. To date, they're about 220. Indeed. And the, this stretch from universities, uh, research and education institutions, like where the public health is. We have secondary schools, I think up to about maybe 30 or so secondary schools are connected. They are primary schools. But according to what Martha was saying, it seems like she's not with any education institutions or research institution, and she just wants to know whether she can get on the grid. Okay, so she has to first get one of the certificates oh. before she gets mm. to renew. Mm. Yes. Uh, all right. I, I do know that we do have another caller on the line. Mr. Jeremiah, you also had a submission you wanted to make on this show. Your life. All right. Hello. Thank you so much, Romeo. And thank, for you for watching. Show. thank you for watching. Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much to Renu for uh, the amazing work they're doing. I heard from Mr. Lloyd that uh, there are over 200 institutes on this uh, network. 220. My question is about uh, membership fee. Yes. 
So what, how much is the membership fee and how easy is it for an entities to become a member? Is it uh, an annual fee, a monthly fee? Yes, what are the rates that are on? All right, that is an amazing question. Mr. Jeremiah, keep on watching. A uh, resolution is coming your way. You. Um, I think I should throw that to Janice. Uh, Janice, go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, Jeremiah, for that question. Mm. It's a very good question. Member now, fee. Yeah, even if we are member, a member network, there are no membership fees charged. You only pay for the services that you're consuming. Mm. So you just inform Renew how, if you're, if you're certified by the different institutions mm. and entities, you just inform Renew about how much internet you'd want, and then you just pay for that. So you just pay for the service. Mm. There are no membership fees or annual fees or anything like mm. that. It's you just pay for the service that you consume. So meaning Jeremiah as an individual, as long as he's allied to any research or, ed or education institution, he has conne a connection with Renew. Yes. All right, do we have another caller, my dear producer, Anna? All right, uh, let me f continue engaging you, uh, Mr. Lloyd Sentongo. You were telling me about the advent or the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and how we thought our infrastructure, network infrastructure before was at par. And then we, re we realized, no, 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 we were not doing anything. Go ahead. You have 17 years of uh, designing and managing network infrastructure projects in East Africa, Mali, and India. Go ahead, Lloyd. So let me say this. Uh, like my colleagues have said, like when this COVID came, mm. it took everyone by surprise because there are people who had the culture of physically being in office, but now you have to deliver services when you're at home. Mm. And they, like they expect you need to be in meetings, you need to sign off things, you need to, so all those things happen. And the to me, my experience, and I keep on discussing with colleagues, is Renew, as an institute, had mm. prepared itself for the pandemic, probably compared to other people. Because just imagine, things like Renew Identity Framework, which is uh, one of the services that keeps Mm. traffic on the Renew Network secure mm. Mm. was there pre before pre-COVID. We had M Conference, we had Edurom, we had uh, File Sender, where huge f files or data sets or volumes of data mm. sent across. Mm. So we had all these things. So I think to me what Renew did for us was those who were slow to take up these services actually said, oh, is this happening? Okay? Yes. But again, if I go back to uh, my institution, Raka Health Sciences Program, which does a lot of high quality research in non reproductive health, non communicable diseases, and other related things, was the, the, the COVID period, the Renew Services helped us to, in, in the research environment, like in the universities, they, they do a lot of publications. We access a lot of journals. So, for you to access a journal, for example, that was released yesterday, you need to either pay for this journal mm. or use a Renew service like the Renew Identity Federation. Mm. So you see that by Renew putting those services, it is enabling research within the institutions. Mm. Because now it means that institutions that are members of this uh, <coughs> uh, federation, they are going to access these journals mm. for free. All right. That is great news. Uh, thank you very much, Lloyd Central. But then one last one. Yes. Uh, we capture data, but also we need to make sure that this, see at times the data that we capture mm. is very secure. So it's also important that uh, from the time of capture, raw, mm. to transmission, it is secure. And the Renew Identity Federation is helping us Indeed. Achieve amazing that. revelations being made on this show, NTV Uganda, by these amazing, very intelligent individuals. Did you know that Renew has a tool that can actually save all the data of your education or research institution? You don't have to buy any servers. You don't have to do anything. Just notify Renew that we want to store our data with your main server, and that will be done then then. I have Elizabeth on the line. A very good afternoon, Elizabeth. How are you doing? And thank you for joining us on NTV Uganda. What's your question? Well, good afternoon, sir. Ah, good afternoon, Elizabeth. 
Um, I'm a university student, and I would want to know more about the uh, Metro Edura and service that right. they talked about. Mm. Okay, thank yes. you very much. A any other question, Elizabeth? No, that's the only question I have. Okay, keep it tuned on NTV Uganda. Uh, Dr. John Chitayimba, there's a question for you. Oh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Romeo. I mean, you're the one who was throwing around Metro Ed <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just don't get why she didn't uh, you know, catch any of that. I mean, you've talked a lot about it. Yes, I mm. think in full it is uh, the metropolitan yes. education roaming. Roaming, yes. Yes, and uh, previously before um, this product came to be used locally, it was being used, uh, mm. say, by what Lloyd said, that when you move, because educational institutions, for example, within the country that are on the Edu uh, on the revenue network, mm. if I, I was say, visiting Janice at uh, KIU, mm. I would be able to connect their network, the Renew network at KIU, without having to ask for a password. What about a South African university? Would you, able to, would you be able to do the same? Exactly. That's so amazing, so when, Elizabeth. Mm. When you Good. visit, for example, Cambridge or Oxford, or you go to Harvard, you don't need to move around the corridors looking for a password. You will connect freely. But now, this particular product, the Metro Edurom, mm. they are bringing that product locally here. Because remember that we were, uh, the, the, the lockdown meant that students were to stay in their homes. Mm. And so um, uh, Renu went looking for the students. Mm. And they started <coughs> with the Kampala, Entebbe, and Mukono. And they put around uh, these three uh, areas, 300 spots, mm. like hot spots, from which you could tap the Renu network and then you could be able to connect to your university or to all these other uh, resources. So meaning it's not instantaneous as it is, you need to be near a hotspot for Renu you need in to that particular jurisdiction. Exactly. And so what Renu is doing at the moment, because this started with uh, the COVID pandemic, mm. they are trying to roll that out uh, to all the different parts of uh, the country. But already we have some hot spots around the country. Mm. For example, if I go to Ishaka mm. and I'm near KIU Ishaka, I am able to connect without any problem. If you mm. go to Arua and Lloyd is near Arua, you see your Arua campus, he's able to connect without any problem. Yes. And so this is a product that we are, uh, we are thinking about and it is going to be rolled out to all the different parts of the country. And all right, Elizabeth, I think you did get your answer with the Metropolitan Educational Roaming. You can even get hooked onto the Renu grid when you're in South Africa, when you're in uh, the United Kingdom, when you're in the United States, mm -hmm. you can still get connected. That is the good news, Elizabeth. And I do have another caller on the line. Very good afternoon. Your name Hello. and where you're calling from? I'm Vincent, I'm calling from from where here. Okay, Vincent, uh, give us your question. Uh, my question for... Uh, so, you know, I'm a researcher, and to inquire which, which services you provide that, that can help me. Are you in a school setting? Yes. Which university? Uh, currently, uh, I, I just graduated from university, but I'm going, I'm going to enroll in a... I was interested in my after I start next week, mm. but I was wondering if you can help me if I'm not in, in an institution setting or I should I have to join an institution. Oh, that is an amazing question. Um, being the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs at UCU, uh, let me just throw this question to you, Dr. Mm -hmm. John Chitaimbo. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much and uh, congratulations on graduating from UCU. But mm. I think uh, Renew is really big, like we said. Well, so far what we have really talked about is uh, the internet connectivity. But this is uh, a network that is bringing together research and education mm. institutions so that they can talk, so that they can collaborate. And mm. I think one way in which it could benefit very easily is there, because the Renew is working on trying to catalog all the research that is going on in this country mm. and to try and uh, start enabling networks between different individuals. So. Mm. Uh, very easily he's going to be able to know who is doing what in this country and which kind of data has been collected where so that he can be able to design his uh, research. But also, uh, Reni will help you to get access to e-library resources because you need articles, you need journal articles, you need books, e-books. They will help you to do that. Thirdly, the affordability of the internet when you are on the 
uh, renew network is also a very big thing but also the fact that it is fast and given the fact that it is free the local traffic is free that is uh, good and it is uh, news <coughs> to the ears of a researcher mm. the cloud services that we offer under renew are very important services and uh, the transfer of big files and all these services we have been mentioned indeed all these are open to you so meaning our man will be helped mm -hmm. and uh, we also do have another caller on the line uh, what's your name and where you're calling from all right uh, we are still establishing that link but we are talking about the research and education network for uganda and the good work they've been doing for the last 15 years your name sir and where you're calling from yeah hello. i'm innocent i'm calling from Mukona. Uh, i wanted to ask those people, what's the extent of their national coverage? Can they operate in areas like Kabong? Can they operate in areas like West Nile? What's the extent of their national coverage? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, any other question? Yeah, that's what I did. Uh, because, you know, in most cases, we have internet providers who tell us they are everywhere. And in most cases, it isn't the case. So what just shows that they are? A perfect question and thank you very much for watching NTV Uganda. All right. Uh, desire. Janice Musinje. Connectivity. Coverage. 80%, 90%, 200%. How, where do we stand? Thank you so much mm. for that question. Mm. Uh, Renu has a countrywide coverage. So it, it doesn't matter which side of the country you are, whichever corner of the country you are, you are able to access Renu as long as you are operating within the context of, uh, of uh, a certified institution mm. that has been registered by Renu and that is a member of Renu. So you could be in Kabong, Kabong Secondary School decides that it wants to join the network. If Kabong decides and it informs Renu and brings all the documentation that is required, then you should be able to access even if you're in Kabong. Kavale can access. Kisoro can access as long as. Yeah, so we have mm. a, 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 a nationwide coverage. Lloyd Zentongo, earlier on you did intimate on this show that uh, mm -hmm, hotspots within rural areas are still being worked on. It might take the whole year. So she says Renu is everywhere and you said you're still working on coverage for the rural part of this country. Okay, so just to add on to what she said. Indeed. Uh, Kavale University is connected. There is a university in Fort Porto. Mm. I know institutions in Narua. Mm. I know Lira is connected. Gulu in Soroti. My own institution in Irakai, mm. close to the Tanzanian border, we have been connected very fast internet. I see. So uh, what happened was initially to ensure that the institutions get the high speed connectivity, it was the fiber print. Mm. So all the universities, all in initial institutions, I mean, that's how we got connected. But now there is a huge demand from other institutions, secondary schools, mm. primary schools. And what Renew has done is to put up the shared capacity. And that's why you see, because you see Renew is not going to put fiber in every place. I mean, you're going to ask for road access, you ask. But w when they put the shared capacity, then it means the users can use institution can use other means mm. to get connected to Renew. Mm. So because now this is happening, then this same infrastructure, Renew is able to put a hotspot in Kavale, in Chisoro, in Arua, mm. Gulu. And the, these don't have to be in the uh, institutions. I will tell you, I, 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 I do work from the Uganda Virus Research Institute at times but uh, around the Victoria Mall and in Tebe Town, there's Edu Room. Indeed. So it's, it's not only in uh, educational institutions, but other places. You could find that around maybe the Winton or National mm. Theatre or Serena here, there could be an Edu Room hotspot. Mm. But what will it take, Lloyd St. Tongo, to ensure absolute coverage of Renu services in this country? Uh, so what I didn't say is from 2006, 2008, yes. it took about three or four years for institutions actually to get connected. But when the institutions saw the value for any services, mm -hmm. the demand was very high. 
He is in the, the universities, and they will tell you that probably 90, over 90% 90 of the universities in the country mm -hmm. are connected to learning. And what we are seeing right now is even the primary schools, secondary schools, like the anger to get connected. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, they are thirsty to. So because of that huge demand, and Renew has put solutions like the shared capacity, I, I anticipate by end of year, a minimum of about 400 mm -hmm. institutions, campuses will be connected from 220 right now. And I can tell you from 220 to about 120, like 100 institutions joined in a period of about one year. Now, because COVID has amplified, sh amplified or showed us the other way mm. of doing things, like the demand for connectivity is very, very high. And I'm not even sure if Renu can meet that demand. Because even the staffing at the Secretariat has almost doubled because of the huge demand. That, that is a really serious statement that uh, yeah. Renu cannot even uh, meet the demand. No. So what kind of help do you need from government for Renu to be able no, to it, meet it, it, the it, huge it, demand that it, has it, come it, about it, as a result it, of COVID-19? It is, it is, but you see, originally because the campuses were not as many as mm. now, so the, the, the resources, they were, they were not as high as they are now. But now if you bring in like primary schools, you bring in secondary schools, then you, you widen your resources on how to satisfy the, yeah. the institutions. All right. That is Lloyd Sentonga, Certified Information Systems Auditor. I also do have Sarah on the line. A very good afternoon, Sarah. What's your question? And thank you for joining us. Hello, good afternoon. This good. Mm, go Sarah ahead. Sarah from uh, Tanzania. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the show. Thank you for watching. I have watching. a question. Uh, what makes a uh, venue different from other commercial service providers on the market? And the second question is how can revenue be rich? All right, Businje. Thank you for that yes. question. Mm. Um, one is that what makes Renu different from other s internet service providers mm. is that one, it, does, it is not a direct internet service provider like you see other uh, telecom companies or other things like that. Mm. It is a network of institutions that come together and say, let's see how to get cheaper internet for us. And it is only specifically for education and research. Mm. So that is the uniqueness about Renu. Mm. And then um, the, the other thing is that um, it, is, um, it is different in the way that it provides it in its internet. Customer care is very important. What frustrates a customer mm. is making a call to an institution that is supposed to provide for you uh, information mm. and then they hold you on a, on a line mm. for almost 20 minutes and you're hearing songs that you never really it asked did. for, bargained mm. for. But here is a, a service where as soon as you press a call or as soon as you, you say, send an email that this is my problem, then they'll be able to respond to you very quickly. So that's how different uh, Renu is. And then the, the, the fact that they have packages for different, uh, for different consumers, then that also allows you to choose which one suits your, suits your needs as mm. an institution. Mm. So that is how uh, different it is. Mm. Then how it can be reached, uh, Renu, uh, the Secretariat of Renu is in Makere University. Mm. And uh, they have a website also where you can reach them. And the contacts are there. There is a phone number, and then uh, also there is a, there is an email address. Mm. And they will be sure to respond as soon as you mm. have sent uh, you have sent through communication. Dr. John Chitaimbo, um, when we talk about Renu, the research uh, education and uh, Renu, the research education network for Uganda, are we talking about connectivity only, internet connectivity? What other services does Renu offer? Um, I we we are not only really talking about uh, mm. connectivity. Mm. We are talking about services that can lead uh, the different institutions, the different individuals to collaborate. So it's not just about the internet? And not just the internet. The internet because is just even, an enabler. Because even many of the callers are saying <laughs> how different is Renu from yeah. other yes. internet service providers, meaning the viewer has it in, engraved in their minds that maybe mm -hmm. Renu is just a, an internet service provider. So help them negate that thought. Uh, it is an enabler for research and education. Indeed. And so that's why you have services like, for example, e-resources, um, uh, the library resources. Mm, mm. Those are key mm. to a researcher and to uh, an educationist. Mm. There we have things like the cloud storage. Uh, one of the, pro the products that we do offer 
is, um, a, um, for example, when you think about security and the systems that we have in the universities, it is important that these are backed up. So, mm. for example, if you see you Mukono campus caught fire, would we be ready to God start forbid. business the following day, <laughs> God forbid, but you know really Indeed. is able to help us yes, to back up those mm. systems elsewhere. Mm. The, so, collocation, it is called a collocation service. Mm. Uh, mm. We have uh, services, for example, like uh, the, the software's purchasing of software's uh, jointly, for example, turn it in at a cheaper cost. Uh, Zoom, we have been talking Zoom licenses now. We have been talking about the big blue button. We are talking about other enablers for research and education mm -hmm. coming into play. And uh, I think um, as uh, an education institution, uh, we are proud to be a part of Renew. Indeed. Um, Lloyd Sintongo, do you think poverty has played a role in stopping many families, students alike, even some institutions from uh, embracing the new technological advances that we are seeing right now that might be, that really, uh, uh, that are needed to actually continue with learning? Uh, poverty could be the, the secondary factor. Uh, the primary factor to me, I think, is the sensitization. Mm. Because, like my colleagues have said, if I can go back a little bit on why Renew, how it is different from an internet service provider, mm. are the services. And I want to bring out one free services that is very good to member institutions that others are not aware of. Mm. He said he does the big data or high capacity computing. And if today he has a collaboration with an institution anywhere in the world, he can tell Renew, can you multiply my bandwidth up to three times mm. or remove any caps? And that is going to create a huge difference at the time when they are doing that uh, collaboration. So going back to the question mm. is, I think to me the issue is not poverty because even those who are not poor, mm. they are not aware of the free services. Mm. So to, to, to me, po poverty is secondary, and the, the primary uh, reason, I think, is the, uh, I think a, a few people are not aware or, and I know Reni is doing whatever it can to improve awareness, mm. but it, it is, to me, more of awareness mm. and not the poverty, because even those who are in So a mindset change. Mm. Yeah to embrace technological advancements. Yes. All right. Um, do you really think, uh, Janice Musinji, that we should actually embark on a sensitization campaign to get into these communities and talk to them about the importance of ICT technological advancements in the wake of the pandemic to continue with e-learning? Sensitization campaign. Yes, Romy, I mm. think that would be very important mm. because uh, like we have for any innovations that come for any new technologies, Indeed. you'll find that there are, there are people that you'll approach and they will just jump on it. They'll go with the flow. Mm. They see a technological uh, innovation, they want to embrace it and they want to try it out mm. and they want to see how it works. Mm. But then majority of the people you find that they just remain, watch, look at how it is progressing and then they hop onto the bus when it is already mm. They'll the wait until they are yes, sure it's working. they'll wait until they're sure it's working. Mm. They'll wait to mm. see my experience of it such that it also uh, influences what they, what they are going to, to get from that service. So definitely a sensitization campaign, informing people about it, community education about this is very important because some people who have, um, who have smartphones may not be aware of what is happening and how they can benefit from these resources. Mm. So a sensitization campaign is definitely in order mm. for, such, uh, for embracing such an innovation. All right, like we are talking about resolutions, Dr. John Chitaimbo, to ensure national coverage, what needs to be done to ensure that every young learner in this country and education or research institution is hooked on the Renew Grid. Mm. I think one of the things that <coughs> needs to happen if um, uh, we are to hook every learner mm. is for the administrators of those institutions to see the value in collaboration. As Renew, we can promise that whether you are in Kabila Maido, we are in Kampala, once you express an interest to mm. join the network, we shall hook you and we shall connect you without any problem. Mm. And so we are calling upon uh, uh, all our colleagues in education and in research to please come and join us because there are lots of great things that can happen when we work and move together. One of the things 
we are seriously thinking about at Renew is how we bring, for example, devices, learning devices to learners. Mm. And uh, imagine if we are to bargain for laptops from a provider as all institutions of higher learning mm. and all institutions uh, of learning and research networks mm. would be able to drive the price of a laptop from say two million to about 400,000. Mm. So when we work together, great things can happen. Indeed. And so we welcome all those people out there who are engaged in research and in education to please come and join us. After 15 years, Renew is ready to take the next step in taking us forward. Thank you. Lloyd Zentongo, let's uh, get a hold of your resolutions in this uh, conversation we are having. National coverage. So, uh, to me, uh, I think this is a national issue and the, the national collaborators need to come in, mm -hmm. like the Communications Commission and NITA, at uh, times even we might involve uh, private service providers. And to me, I think that's what this would do is they would do, for example, I know in uh, Europe and I think South Africa for the fiber, for the national fiber that moves across the country, it's a requirement to donate part of that uh, fiber to the research and education network. And what this translates to is the enabling, empowering the education in the country. So in addition to what he said of the institutions coming together, I think also the national players need to, I, I know they're already doing something, but uh, after what we are seeing with this COVID, mm. they just need to step up and see how they can collaborate and work with Renew mm. to see that we I see. Amazing. Yeah, Dr. John Chitaimbo, you have a question right here. It's come from uh, YouTube, and this is Anthony Mugori. He's saying, why are universities of KIU and UCU, it should also pitch in, uh, unable to introduce 100% online teaching, unlike their counterparts, which is IUEA, International University of East Africa, and also Cavendish? Hmm. Let me start with you, John. Um, thank you so much. Um, first and foremost, it's not true that there are uh, no courses that are 100% online. We have uh, a number of courses at Uganda Christian University that are online. Since COVID, mm. all our postgraduate programs are fully online. And so uh, that is uh, not true. But also, it takes, you know, when you're offering a, a quality product, it takes a bit of regulation. You know, when the COVID hit, uh, the national uh, regulator gave us what are called emergency uh, guidelines for operating during this period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what most of the universities are doing at the moment is to rework and review their curriculums so that they can get them approved by the National Council for Higher Education as fully online programs. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the future and this is the way to go and many um, other institutions of higher learning are going to do this. Okay, Janice, perspective from KIU did mystify Anthony's uh, contestation that the university is not 100% teaching online. Well, um, for some courses, you find that like KIU, where we offer medical, medicine-related courses, mm. health-related courses, engineering courses, the students need some practical, you know, touch of what they are supposed to do. For instance, teaching a student uh, mm. of anatomy, you need uh, to have an anatomy lab. You need them to experience, to have mm. an experience with, with a cadaver, for instance, mm. in, a, in, a, in an anatomy lab. Mm. So yeah. because of that, we felt that if we have a blended approach to learning, then we'll be able to at least have some students who are going to have an experience mm -hmm. of what they should be they should be experiencing and then do other things online. So it is just the, the different uh, sections of the curriculum mm. that can be put online and then others can be put uh, on the on on blended. All right, this is a yes or no question, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, are all university or research education institutions in Uganda part or members of Renault? Not all of them. Thank you very much. That is Lloyd Sentongo, the Certified Information Systems Auditor. Yes, we had him here on Interview Uganda. He's also an IT manager from Rakai Health Sciences Program. He has 17 years of designing and also, yes, uh, putting in place all this in network infrastructure in Mali, India, and also East Africa. Yes, we also did have Associate Professor Janice Desire Businje. She's an Associate Professor with KIU, Kampala International University, and also the Secretary of that same university. University. Lastly, Dr. John Chitaimbo is the Deputy Vice Chancellor, uh, Academic Affairs.
Affairs at Uganda Christian University. He's also the Deputy Chairperson of Renu Board. Many thanks, Lloyd, John, and Janice for having made the time to speak to NTV Uganda. Thank you Indeed. very much. Thank and you. to you who has been watching NTV from 3.30 up to now, please keep on watching. There's a lot more in store for you. My name is Rami Busiku. The Beat is coming right up. Good afternoon.